it's really kind of a bummer that we have natural bandits. Natural bandits that take our magnesium and make it so that we can't really utilize it within the body. It's our job to figure out where these bandits are hiding, and they're hiding in a lot of the foods that we eat. So we just have to figure out what the substitutes are. So what today's video is about is foods that destroy magnesium absorption. And it sounds like this fear-mongering title, because it kind of is, because these things exist. So we'll talk about them, we'll give you solutions, and we'll talk about some other ways to enhance magnesium absorption so you can get the most out of this epic mineral that's involved in over 300 different enzymatic processes within the body. All right, so hear me out. But first, please do hit that red subscribe button that's down there in the corner, and then please hit the bell icon and select all notifications so you can see our daily videos. I really appreciate you guys subscribing and making this channel possible. All right, let's go ahead and rock and roll. First thing I wanna talk about is something known as oxalic acid or oxalates. Okay, oxalates are chelating agents that bind to metals to ultimately form a water-soluble component that can get excreted, okay? So it forms a water-soluble complex. So in essence, what's going on is oxalic acid combines with certain minerals like magnesium to form a unique complex that can be excreted out of the body. There you go. So it takes magnesium, binds to it, makes it so you can't absorb it. It tends to have a strong affinity to magnesium. It binds so strongly to the magnesium in our body that the enzymes that we have within our gut don't have the ability to break it down. They can't separate this bond, okay, which means that the magnesium can't cross through that epithelial layer. It can't cross through the intestinal wall and it can't actually get utilized in the body. So we end up in a magnesium deficiency. Now there's an interesting study that was published in the British Journal Nutrition that took a look at magnesium absorption in the body when combined with either spinach or kale. So they had subjects consume spinach or kale two times a day on days one and three of this protocol. Okay. And they determined that those that consumed the spinach ended up having less magnesium in their body. They ended up having less blood levels of magnesium. That's a very short amount of time to already be developing somewhat of a deficiency. And it clearly indicates that spinach, which are just very high in oxalates, is definitely going to be a contributor to why they're not absorbing magnesium. So what we need to look at here is, well, what are some substitutes for things like spinach, things that are high in oxalates? Well, first off, let's see what's high in oxalates. We've got spinach, okay, raw spinach is very high in oxalic acid. Okay, then we've got peanuts. So yep, unfortunately, if you're worried about magnesium, and quite frankly, you should be, you probably wanna ditch the peanut butter or at least slow down on it. Then additionally, we've got beets, we've got chard, we've got a couple of these other things. You could do a quick Google search on vegetables that are high in oxalic acid, you'll be able to get a wide list. The thing that a lot of people don't tell you is that if you simply cook a lot of these vegetables, it does break it down. So a raw spinach goat cheese salad might not be the best thing, but having some wilted spinach with a little bit of coconut oil on your eggs, that's probably just fine. But either way, what can you sub it for? Well, spinach, sub it out with kale or a regular spring mix. Then additionally, you can have things like broccoli, have things like artichokes, which surprisingly enough, have a little bit of magnesium in them to begin with. So you get the best of both worlds. You don't have the decrease in absorption, but you also get the, well, it has it inherently. So you get magnesium coming in too. All right, now let's talk about the other piece of the equation, phytic acid. So phytic acid is another compound that we're gonna find in a lot of plant foods that makes it so that magnesium doesn't get absorbed. Now people get oxalic acid and phytic acid uh, confused a lot. They're very similar, but whereas oxalic acid is working more in sort of a chelation method to form a water soluble complex, phytic acid just has a strong affinity for different minerals and just locks them up. It doesn't have like a solid chelation purpose. It's more protective and that's why you see it in animal species and things like that so that nuts can pass through the intestinal tract and stay intact so that they can germinate and grow, right? When you look at animal droppings, you'll see chunks of seeds and things like that. Case in point, it makes it hard to absorb magnesium. Now there's an interesting study that was published in the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition, very similar to the British Journal of Nutrition study that I referenced earlier. This took a look at test subjects that were consuming uh, fortified bread or regular bread or bread that didn't have any phytic acid in it. So basically it looked like this. Subjects were to consume either uh, bread that had no phytic acid in it whatsoever, bread that had a naturally just moderate amount of phytic acid in it, or bread that was enriched with phytic acid. Well, they discovered in this study that there was a dose-dependent relationship with phytic acid and magnesium absorption. So basically, the more phytic acid that was in a compound, in a piece of bread, the less magnesium was absorbed. So the group that ended up eating the, the bread that had no phytic acid absorbed magnesium relatively well. So I guess we need to get rid of phytic acid too. Well, where are you gonna find phytic acid? Well, spinach, Ugh, okay, I guess that's two for two with spinach. Maybe we should just 86 that one altogether. You're gonna see it in a lot of whole meal brands, so a lot of bran, a lot of whole wheat products. You're definitely going to see it in almonds and you're definitely going to see it in cashews. 
So I talk to the keto community a lot because they're eating a lot of almond flour, a lot of almond butter, a lot of cashew butter, and unfortunately it's making so they're not getting all the minerals that you really should be getting. So what you're gonna wanna do is you wanna soak them for like 10 hours so you're breaking down the phytic acid, and then you can put them under a broiler or put them in the oven and bake them for a little while so you can dry up all the water. But anyhow, that's neither here nor there. The nuts that you really should just be focusing on are gonna be things like mac nuts, macadamia nuts, and pecans, and occasionally some pine nuts. Super, super low phytic acid content, so that way you're able to get the fatty acid profile without the phytic acid, making it so you're not absorbing magnesium. And once again, as far as the veggies go, kale and lettuce are gonna be much, much better than spinach. I will make a note too, I've assembled some groceries through Thrive Market if you wanna check them out. So down below in the description, there is a link to Thrive Market, which is an online membership-based grocery store. So it allows you to get groceries that I would recommend delivered directly to your doorstep. So no more going to the store for pantry staples, all that fun stuff. It's like you're going grocery shopping with me and I get to help you choose exactly what you need to live a healthier lifestyle. So they're a big supporter, big sponsor of this channel. Highly, highly recommend you check them out. Really, it's better than going to the grocery store in my opinion. Saves you a ton of time because you're not going to the grocery store, getting in the car, etc. And anything that I'm talking about in my videos, you'll typically find in my Thrive boxes. So highly recommend you check them out after we finish up this video. Because there's another piece we need to talk about, which is the world of insoluble fiber. You see, we come from this world where we've been constantly told, eat more fiber, eat more fiber, eat more fiber. When in reality, that might not be what we need, at least in the way of insoluble fiber. You see, the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition published yet another study that demonstrated that when there was a high amount of cellulose, a popular insoluble fiber, magnesium levels increased in the fecal matter. That's not where it should be. It should be in our bloodstream, not in the fecal matter. Now, this is probably just because absorption was slowed down because motility improved, right? Everything was moving through the intestinal tract really fast. Well, that's good in some ways, but bad in others because we're not absorbing these minerals that have a certain molecular weight that might take some time to properly absorb. So if we have soluble fiber, we allow the roughage to occur in sort of a more gelatinous way that allows us to still absorb those minerals without just pushing them through too aggressively. Now, another thing that you can do to increase magnesium absorption is there's some evidence that shows that a higher protein intake increases magnesium absorption. Does this have to do with the fact that it takes longer to digest? It very well could be. So generally speaking, we're seeing in studies that if protein is a little bit higher, magnesium levels are usually a little bit higher. And it could just be because there's more magnesium in different animal proteins and things like that. But one other thing that's been shown to help out with magnesium absorption is going to be resistant starches. So resistant starches are given uh, starches that don't break down well in the body. And the reason that that is a good thing in this case is because it allows the gut microbiome to grow. Okay, so when you have different starches that don't just absorb, they get fed on by the bacteria within your gut. And that creates these different intermediary bacteria, and that creates these other short chain fatty acids and all this other stuff that's going to allow you to have a more diverse gut microbiome, which could play a role in defeating the whole oxalic acid issue that we talked about earlier in this video. Now, I know that's complex and I don't wanna go down that rabbit hole, but the point is the more diverse the gut biome, the higher potential you have to absorb your magnesium. Case in point with all of this though, is avoid the raw spinach, sub it out for kale when Never possible. Avoid the almonds, avoid the peanuts, avoid the cashews unless they're absolutely sprouted and make sure that you're just doing what you can to get the foods that are rich in magnesium without the chelators or without the phytic acid. I'll see you tomorrow.